Esthetician Horror Story Part 1. If you're an esthetician, or even if you're not an esthetician, I highly suggest you still watch this because it's pretty funny. So just to clarify, this is not my story. This did not happen to me. This happened to my teacher um, in beauty school. She was telling us this. We're going to call the said client Sheila. Her name's Sheila. Today. It's not actually, but today it is. So Sheila comes in for Brazilian wax. If you don't know what a Brazilian wax is, it's all the stuff down there. Everything. The whole shebang. Anyways, Sheila is a bigger lady. She is a plus size woman. Nothing wrong with that. It's great. Everybody's beautiful. Sheila came in for Brazilian wax because she could not reach down there anymore. No problem. We'll help you out. So, doing the wax, everything's going fine. Go up to the top part. And usually when you have a bigger client, um, or not even like bigger clients, just a lot of the time you'll ask the client to pull their stomach up just so that the skin is taut and it's easier for you to rip the wax off. So, said client, Sheila, was asked to please pull up her stomach. And she's like, okay. She pulls her stomach up. Sheila has a sandwich. She has a sandwich. Not a sandwich in her hand. She doesn't, she doesn't have a sandwich in her purse. Sheila has a sandwich. Sheila, Sheila pulls up her, her stomach and a sandwich falls out. A sandwich. A sandwich. Now, when something like this happens, you try to be as professional as you can be. But, like, a sandwich. A full sandwich. My teacher, the esthetician that was performing this wax, just says, you have a sandwich. Like, what else do you say? What else do you say? Like, it's hard to just kind of ignore that when a sandwich falls out of someone. She, like, gets embarrassed for like half a second and then she laughs and just says, oh my gosh, I forgot that was there. I forgot I put that there. What? What? The things we see as estheticians, like, ah. Let me know if you want another story like this. I have plenty, I have plenty. Estheticians see crazy shit, crazy shit. It's wild. On another note, don't be Sheila. If you're gonna use your stomach, as a purse or a lunchbox, take it out before you come get undressed and get onto our table, please. Okay guys, so I'll be doing my first ever horror story um, with waxing. So to start off, I was, at the time, this had to be my first year in waxing and I was working at this waxing company, I'm not gonna name, <laughs> but I was working at this waxing company and I was there for about three and a half years, so, ooh. Not like anything. But anyways, we're gonna get into the story. So I basically got this client and she wasn't a regular and she came in and I gave her the regular rundown, get undressed face down. So she gets on the bed, she gets in a butt position. I'm cleansing her and as I'm getting towards the lips, I'm seeing this greenish white I don't know what it was, but I was seeing it. And I was just like, girl, if I'm gonna be wiping down like that, I didn't cleanse that part, like the inside of her lips. So we get ready to do the butt strip. I tell her to put her knees to the chest. So before I can even wax her butt, it was literally shit, smushed, by the cheeks, everything. It was just everywhere. And it was from her butthole all the way to the top of her lips. So not knowing no better, I literally just took the wax stick and I tapped it on her butt so she can think I did something but I ain't do nothing. I turned my back and when I turn back, she's like examining her Brazilian and she opens up her lips. Where the shit is at? She opens it up and sees it here and looks at me and tells me that I should wax it. But anyways, don't chew me up too much. Now I know better from that experience. Welcome back to another episode of Waxing Horror Stories where I tell you all the horrifying things I've gone through as an esthetician. <laughs> Not really though, because this happened like four or five years ago and we can just sit here and laugh about it together.
So this happened at one of my very first aesthetics jobs, one of my first waxing jobs ever. It was in a retail space and we had a brow bar in the middle of the store. So a lot of the times guests would just come up, sit down really quick. We'd do like a brow wax and tint, lip wax, and they'd be on their merry way. So I didn't have like a ton of regulars. It was mostly just like people shopping around and they get interested by the brow bar. This particular client I had never seen before in the store, never waxed her before, and she was interested in a brow wax. She comes up to me. She She's super sweet. I tell her about the whole process because she had actually never been waxed before at all. And then she wanted to get the brow wax. So we have like these little bar stools that I had her sit down at and I just started waxing her brows. Her first brow, she's super sweet. We talk, we have a really nice conversation, and then I get to the next brow. I was waxing the last brow. I noticed that like progressively through our conversation that like the stench was just arising what's the word like like the air started getting smellier i don't know how else to explain it smells and pee pee and poo poo and blood and all that do not affect me i literally wax coochies for a living literally nothing affects me i can't really smell anything ever so for this to like hit my nostrils and me be taken aback by it just know that it was really smelly and it just like kept progressively getting worse as I was finishing up her wax. So I almost had to like not talk as much because it was bothering me to that extent. So I would have to like lay down a little bit of wax and just like go over here for a second, get another stick and like breathe the fresh air. I finish up her brows, she loves them. Again, she's super sweet. She gets up to leave and I see her walk away. I turn back around to clean up my station and I notice a smear of shit on the chair. Then pee pee poo poo does not bother me, but as soon as I saw it and just smelled it, it was just the worst stench that I have ever smelled in my life. I ran to the back and just started dry heaving in the trash can and my coworkers were back there and they're like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, what's going on? And I was like, somebody just shit in my chair. So some of my coworkers wanted to go see like the crime scene. So taken aback by it as well. So yeah, I mean, she didn't say anything. She didn't seem like she was in pain or you know, like she didn't, I don't know if she knew that she had an accident. I didn't want to like embarrass her or anything like that. No, shit happens. I had a first time customer come in for a Brazilian wax. Three weeks later, she messages us stating that she wants a refund because she had hair growing in. We explained to her that that is normal. After two to three weeks, you will notice hair sprouting back in and you're supposed to be back on your fourth week. She's like, no, I thought that after you get a wax, you don't get any hair at all. This was a waste of my money. We explained to her that it's not like electrolysis or laser hair removal. Yeah, your hair will get thinner, less ingrowns, less breakouts. It's a lifestyle, but it doesn't completely and permanently remove the hair as explained on our social media. She ends up disputing the charges. We won, of course. We just want you to know the hair does grow back. Okay, so I think it's about time. I'll just go ahead and tell this story. So I have... A male client come in and he wants a butt facial same thing you do to your face you do to your butt I mean not on the inside and the butt crack but on the outer you know the cheeks so I hadn't seen this client before so I had the front desk um, look up under the clients profile and like I want to look at their past like their history so we're looking through the history and it had been maybe four five months or maybe even a little longer since he had been here but it was before i had started he only came to get butt facials weird and for me that was just red flag number one right it's butt facials and never gets a wax so i'm putting on my esthetician hat and thinking like okay so maybe he takes some medication or you know you could do anything, a, a sport, an activity, um, and you just get breakouts there or, you know, be active in other places, doing other things, whatever the case is, like, okay, we'll see what it looks like when it gets here. The African-American man, very thin, um, he has a, a baseball cap on when he comes and I put him in the room, but he's giving like cancer patient 
from like how thin his body frame is. He's talking very low and very slow. I put him in the room and I let him get up comfortable. You know, I tell him lay face down. He knows the drill. So I go get the um so I go get my products that I'll need to use for the facial and I go get the steamer. The steamer's on the roller, so I had to wheel it down and you know it's starting to boil the water because in the facial you get the steam treatment. So let's not forget that the steam is still boiling next to the bed, preparing to come out of the steamer over his little booty cheeks, right? Because he's laying face down, I'm on his left side of on the that side of the bed because he's face down and because he's face down like his hands are you know up because he's laying on this side of his body right so i'm starting and massaging you know um putting the cleanser on there adding the water to you know tell people i glitch um, all the time here it comes emulsify the cleanser and whatnot i realize that his hand is like he's trying to push his shoulder so he's like you need y'all to see he what he was doing, bed. like laying down, trying so, to grab instead me. Instead of standing next to him, I, I come back further, so I'm like down here by his knee area, and I'm still able to do what I need to do. So once he realizes I'm no longer close enough to where he can touch me, he Mind starts you, he never like did touch me. wiggling and like rubbing himself. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, knowing that this man, man was dry humping the table, y'all. Like, you. seriously, um, dry humping. I ask him, you know, just remembering what he, like, from appearance, what he looked like when he came in. Just trying to take in all oh, way this too understanding. into account. Now that I'm thinking I'm like, about okay, this. you know, Mr. Way too understanding. Just call him Bob. Mr. Bob, do you, you know, do you need to get up? Do you need to readjust yourself? Do you need me to step out? Do you need a minute? You know, just making sure I die. Before what I was already thinking is actually about to happen. I just knew he about to try something. I was prepared to choke him, hit him. Anything. So, he's like, no, I'm okay, okay. I am I just want to relax. I just want to relax. So, he then takes his right hand and, you know, because he's laying down again and now it's underneath him and he's holding his tool and toys, right, with his right hand. And now he's pushing them against his leg and up and at towards me, you know, to try to make himself H-A-R-D. I literally took a step back, like my hands are off of him and I'm just watching what he's doing. Like, okay. Okay. This is where we're at. So I step out of the room, I walk outside, and I call the owner. I'm like, hey, have you ever had issues out of this client? Like, these are the few things that I'm concerned about. This is what he's doing. And, you know, I'm not about to, no. Mm -mm. And she says, yeah, I have had something happen in the past. Like, he touched me before, and I told him that if he ever did that again, he couldn't come back here. <laughs> what? So you didn't think to tell me this? Beforehand? Before you put me in the room with this man? I just go back in the room, and I tell him he needs to pay, and then he needs to leave. I'm not even mad at him. Because, of course, somebody who is used to coming, mind you, I said this would have been his fifth time. Someone who's used to doing certain things, they're just going to continue doing them un until somebody stops them, right? I was more upset at the owner because at this time, I was the lead esthetician. Um, and so she would be calling me more often keeping in touch you know can you tell them this can you tell them that can you make sure this can you make sure that you know all that so when i realized like you can call my phone and make sure that an important client who's coming in you want to make a good impression uh you call my phone four times about some shit like that but you won't call me and let me know about weirdo man now i'm questioning you Y'all, I was hot, so bothered, and so upset because I have been in 
several situations, you know, being graped, um, assaulted. I'm going to just say I was hot. Like, I was super hot and I was ready to fight. I was ready to throw hands. After having a conversation with my mom, she was like, well, just be mindful that, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. You can say what you want to do to say what you want to the lady. But she clearly allows stuff like that. And it was just to me, like, over $60? I can do two Brazilians in the amount of time that the facial would have taken. The butt facial would have taken. And you could have made $90, almost $100. So I think a, a good takeaway from the story is to respect the people who are servicing you. Even though they're providing you a service, they are not your servants. Still show them some respect, okay? Especially your wax girl. Like, y'all know how that could potentially be. But if you want to hear some more crazy Brazilian stories or, you know, wax stories, let me know. <laughs>